So I am here with Matthew Miller, city councilman for the city of Greenwood, Ward 5. He is also running for re-election. Uh, first of all, Matthew, congratulations on the big six to one vote uh, Tuesday night. That was huge uh, for the uh, extending the mask ordinance by what was it, 60 days? I got lost there. I didn't know if it was 30 or 60 days, but we settled we on another six, 60 days, right? We did have the two options, but uh, the, it was the 60 days. And we are uh, pledging as a council to look at it again in 30 days uh, just to make sure we're uh, constantly apprised of the data and, and making sure we're on top of things. Yeah, that was huge. I, I liked how the presentation opened with the fact that the uh, counties and, and cities throughout South Carolina, according to DHEC, who had enacted mask ordinances, saw the drop, uh, whereas those counties that did not actually saw a rise over time. Uh, so it, was, it seemed like it was a very data-driven decision what was the, the vote the first time around? I forget the, the it was, numbers. It was five to two the first time. So uh, this time the mayor joined the positive votes um, with us. Six to one is pretty definitive. Uh, yeah. And I had also observed that there was a small contingent of uh, executives and doctors from self that were present uh, to lend support to the mask ordinance. Now, I was surprised that there wasn't uh, offered an option to do some public uh, input, you know, at, at the podium. What happened with that? Uh, it's a little different when we're doing an emergency ordinance. Um, so uh, with any other regular ordinance, we would have to do two readings and one of those would have to be a public hearing. Uh, since this is an emergency ordinance um, and it's it, it sunsets, uh, we have we can do that with uh, without public comment. Okay. And I think that uh, just myself and hearing from other members of council, we had a lot of that public input through email, phone calls, uh, Facebook messages and, and comments. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people think that we weren't uh, keeping the community uh, in, in, the, in our minds. But uh, I know uh, just speaking for myself that I was going off of uh, what I was hearing over the last uh, two months plus from my constituents and other residents of the city. Well, I, I can speak for myself, but I'm sure a lot of other people have showed up prepared with grandiose speeches <laughs> ready to give should the opportunity rise, but uh, happy that at the end of the day, it wasn't even necessary. Agreed. <laughs> so that's great. Well, hey, we're actually here to talk about another program uh, that the city council has been promoting. And uh, oddly enough, today I actually started seeing signs for it spread up, uh, pop up throughout the city, and that is for the BOOST program. So, uh, Mr. Councilman, could you give us a quick debrief as to what BOOST stands for and, and what's going on there? Right. BOOST is just a, a, a good name that was come up with by our Chamber of Commerce and a team that's working there. Um, and doesn't it doesn't stand for anything, but it uh, but it <laughs> there's no no uh, no acronym here, but uh, better services and reduced property taxes um, I think um, are a, a better um, way for us to push this instead of um, you know saying hey everybody let's raise raise some taxes uh, because that's really not what it is uh, you know it, it's really an initiative to to reduce property taxes uh, across the board in the county. So we're reducing um, property taxes if you live in the city, or is it you're saying it reduced for the whole county as well? It would be for the whole county. So <clears throat> we can't en uh, enact this as a city alone, and that's why we were able to talk with our county uh, council representatives, and they were willing, after hearing from us and uh, other towns in the in the county, uh, to put this on the ballot in the fall. And, oh, so uh, this is so, something that we're all going to be asked to vote on as part of the November election. That's right. So it's not so, just uh, Trump Biden. It's also <laughs> boost or no boost. Right. Okay. And so uh, similar to 2016, when we voted on a capital project sales tax for Greenwood County, um, this, this will be on the ballot as a question to voters throughout the entire county. Right. So I'm still not sure what what it is we're voting on. So I hear we're reducing property taxes. Okay, nobody's gonna argue with that. What's the flip side? How are we funding the decrease in property taxes? 
So the decrease would be funded by a 1% increase in sales tax across the county. Um, and this would be on, on everything, uh, goods and services. And uh, you know, unlike the capital project sales tax, this would include grocery items, which we were trying to exempt at the beginning, but we're told uh, that according to state law that it is not exempt. Uh, it's not something we can exempt. Um, you know, the state has uh, no sales tax on grocery. Uh, we do, the capital project sales tax is exempted on grocery, but this would not be. Um, and that being said, uh, you know, the, the pros of this are the reduced property taxes for uh, everybody in the county. Uh, and so this would be people that own homes that, but also those that own cars. So what the, the current tax rate is what? 7%, 7.25%. Do, do you know what it is in the county? In the city of Greenwood, um, it's up to 8%. Okay. Uh, this, this would take it up to 8%. And then is there any new project that's been earmarked to utilize the, this new program or is it really just a reallocation shifting it from property to sales, but you net the same income as a county to operate by? So for all of our uh, county, the county and the municipalities, uh, it would really just be more of that shift. Um, in the end, it would, it would net an increase for the, for the county and for all the municipalities. And how that money it, can be used, however. How does it net an however, increase? Uh, so the the amount we would use to uh, we can we can take seventy one percent of the money that's given for um, that that's taken in from the uh, sales tax increase, and that seventy one percent has to go to property tax reduction, and the twenty nine percent on top of that is for general income. Okay, I, you know I just and then. Just thinking on the fly here, I also see, you know, property tax is limited geographically. So you have a physical boundary that here are the properties that you can tax. But when you're talking a sales tax, you're talking about anybody who comes passing through the area, comes from out of town for an event or to shop or to fill up on gas or things like that. You know, so you're right. really... Disadvantage. We're at a disadvantage to counties around us because... Um, out of the, the Lakelands area or the Gleams area, for those that know it, um, five of those seven counties already have a, a, a sales tax just like this. So if you go to Abbeville or Lawrence, you're paying this. Um, I believe the only other county that doesn't have it is Newberry. Um, so if, if we're going through any of those counties, uh, gas or any other purchases, um, then, then you're paying that for them and they have that property tax production. Um, but but we don't have that, and I think it puts us at a dis disadvantage compared to those counties, uh, especially considering we're more of that hub of of the area, uh, and that a lot of people are coming here to to shop or dine as opposed to going to Greenville or Columbia sometimes. So, who, is there an individual whose brainchild the Boost program was? Is there somebody who would take credit for this, or was it a it, collaborative I don't think effort? So. It's uh, been something that we've talked about for a long time. The state uh, offered this option uh, back about 30 years ago. Oh. Um, and uh, it, it was an option given to counties to, uh, to raise the income while also reducing property taxes by a great deal. And uh, we voted on this in, I believe, 1991. And at that point, it did not pass. And uh, we haven't uh, revisited this since then. It could be revisited every time uh, we have an election, but uh, I think that the interest just wasn't there. Um, but after our, uh, you know, success in, in the capital projects tax, I think that this was uh, something that we really wanted to look at. And as a city, there are certain things that we provide that we're trying to provide, including things that we're providing with the capital projects tax, like parks, uh, that we need uh, some, some additional income for for maintenance. Uh, we want to build a, a park on the south end of town that we're moving forward with, uh, with the Foundry Park. And uh, that, you know, the Parks Commission has helped us a lot with, with our maintenance. Uh, the city staff does a lot of maintenance at our current parks. 
uh, but we you know really needed that extra um, boost really to to help with whenever this park is completed. I see how you did. That. Right. I see how you worked the word boost in there. That was very clever, <laughs> Councilman. That was good. Subliminal, <laughs> but I'm going to call it out just so we don't get brainwashed. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> So let me see if I understand this. Since this is a countywide initiative, does the city benefit from the increased sales tax if the transaction occurs outside of the city limits? Or is it solely for transactions that happen inside the city that the city benefits from? No, there's a, a complicated uh, uh, formula that the state has that is based on on um, where the purchase occurs and the population. So, um, so you know, if, if it was based on transactions, the city would, would benefit much more. But instead, you know, those that the benefits are pushed along to towns like Troy, who uh, may not have had that, you know, income with sales tax. Um, but it, it still will benefit everyone across the entire county, um, even if Greenwood City is taking in more of more right. of this. Um, so it truly is a county-wide um, initiative, and not something that's the city's brainchild or just the county's brainchild. It truly is a a big partnership across multiple groups. Right. We have taken the initiative, I think, to push the education uh, on the initiative, uh, but uh, for sure, it is something that's going to benefit uh, really equally across the county. Um, and that being said, uh, with with a couple of the towns in the county um, and the amount of uh, revenue that they would receive from this could um, eliminate or almost eliminate their municipal property taxes. Um, so at least Troy could eliminate their municipal property taxes and Hodges would be pretty close, okay. um, which which I think would be a great help to people, of course, that live there. Right. You know, one one um, thing I saw when Mayor Smith was presenting to the county council, and it seems like it was a hundred months ago, but I think it was just earlier this year, pre-COVID, uh, he was presenting to the county council. And one thing that I remembered him saying was that over the decades, the property tax base of the city of Greenwood has decreased substantially um, because of the rise of nonprofits and other tax exempt organizations taking property in the city, which is fine, but that has eaten the funds from which the city could use to build parks and do other public service. So this is a, a good reset, so to speak, um, that would help the city out tremendously as well as these out, you know, these other uh, rural towns like uh, Hodges and Troy, et cetera. Uh, that's true. Uh, and in the city of Greenwood, I think we're near uh, about almost 40% of our property is tax exempt. Um, and mm -hmm. that, that can really hurt, uh, you know, it, it can hurt property owners, um, you know, inadvertently, uh, because all, like you said, all these nonprofits are important to the city. Uh, they, they do a great deal of good work. Um, a lot of that is, is healthcare related to um, with with self regional having expanded a lot of their services over the last uh, couple decades, um, it, it's yeah you can go online uh, to the to the Boost Greenwood website and there's a calculator that'll show you uh, based on how much uh, real and personal property you have uh, that's taxed uh, and it'll tell you how much you'll save uh, you know, over the the next okay. few years. Um, okay. Well, listen, everybody, Matthew Miller is running for re-election in Ward 5 uh, in Greenwood City, and he has competition this year. But as you can see, Matthew knows what he's talking about. He's been doing this for years. He's not just filling uh, a seat. He's not just a warm body filling the chair. He knows his stuff. He knows what's going on. He's made his case. Uh, very knowledgeable guy. Uh, Matthew, how can people help you out with your campaign, get involved, et cetera? Uh, you can feel free to reach out to me um, as we get closer to the election. Uh, I'll be doing a lot more when it comes to getting uh, out to voters. Of course, this year it's a little different uh, and, you know, the the physical distancing. Uh, and also, if you have any questions about the Boost initiative, uh, I can answer those questions. You can reach out to uh, our, our city officials or uh, the Chamber of Commerce who's doing a lot um, or uh, reach out on the website and uh, you'll see some contact information there. All right, you can find Matthew Miller on Facebook. Just do a search on Matthew Miller Ward 5 
Uh, he's also on Twitter as well. So if you're looking for updates as to what's happening uh, in his world in this campaign, there's no better place to do so. Hey, Matthew, thank you very much for uh, for speaking with us. I appreciate everything you do, and you're making a pretty uh, good third vice chair as well as a good city councilman. <laughs> and all the other things you do in your life. I don't know how, how you do it. <laughs> thank you. All right. Take care. Thanks for having me. You too.